Hi, my name is Amy Lee Bell. Years ago on my blog, I started a series called Assisting Silent Seekers. And my idea was to look at the analytics for my blog site to see who was hitting it and what search items they were typing in. I thought that if I could figure out what people wanted to know, if it happened to be something that I knew how to answer, I would just go ahead and write up a blog post for an answer so that the next time someone typed it in, they would have a nice place to land. I didn't make things up. I didn't go into things I didn't know what they were, but only if I had had some experience or maybe some interest myself into that topic. I called it Assisting Silent Seekers because a lot of people are looking for answers to things that they don't want to speak out loud. Maybe they don't want people to know that they're looking for a certain answer, or maybe they're afraid people will look down on them. I mean, we look for things all the time, and we don't tell people that we're looking because we don't want people to know. For I mean, there are numerous reasons why you might feel that way. Well, in the last few years, I kind of started a new journey in my own life, and that is discovering the instructions that God gave us in the first five books of the Bible, uh, specifically in uh, Exodus through Deuteronomy. My whole entire life, I had been told that these instructions, we'll, we'll call them the law, for lack of a better word, were... I mean, I guess no one ever said they were bad for us, but were burdensome, and that Jesus Christ came to free us from the obligation to keep the law, okay? So I had always been taught that he did away with the law. Well, my dad, a few years ago, maybe four years ago, started saying things that <laughs> I thought he was crazy, um, that the law was still good for us that we should still uh, keep the instructions that God gave the Israelites. And I just thought he was nuts. Number one, I, I had always heard that those instructions were for the Israelites only. And in my head, I equated that with the Jewish people. Um, I was told that the law was burdensome, which I just mentioned. I thought that he had set himself up to believe that maybe he had private knowledge that the rest of us didn't have because suddenly he knows something that nobody else knows. And so I, I was really kind of worried about him. I thought that he would begin to believe that he had to earn his salvation and that somehow that would negate what Jesus Christ did for us. So I thought I saw him heading down all these horrible, terrible paths. And the first thing I did was set out to put a stop to it. So I went back to the Bible and I thought, well, I have a Bible at home. I can prove him wrong. It's going to be so easy. And so I started to dig and dig and dig and dig. And I just have to say, I mean, I know I'm saying I'm delivering this with a little bit of emotion, but I have to say that the word of God proved me wrong. Um, I couldn't find the things that I had been taught. Not clearly. There was a lot of manipulation going on, a lot of um, presumptions, things that I believed already to be true. And so I read the scripture and interpreted the scripture in the way that I thought it should go. And so um, anyway, well, I was I, I feel like I was wrong. OK, now you guys. <laughs> You are welcome to disagree with me, but I would urge you to go to the Bible and prove me wrong. Don't just sit there and think of all the things you've ever been taught by another man. Don't just sit there and think of all the ways you've interpreted the Bible in the past and think that you have what it takes to prove me wrong. Um, I would urge you to start at the beginning. Start in Genesis, read it all the way through. And just see what happens. Um, this morning, and this is the reason I'm making the video this morning. Well, I guess let me address the assisting silent seekers. The reason I'm going to call this video series the same name is because I know so many people, and I was one of them, who was suddenly starving for information, starving for answers, 
but I have personally experienced a lot of backlash, a lot of flack. Now I'm the black sheep of our Christian community because I hold some different opinions and interpretations than the rest of us. Um, and I know that people realize that once they start down this path, <laughs> Forever will it dominate their destiny. Okay, I'm a Star Wars nerd coming out of me. But um, once you start down this path, once you realize that the whole Bible is true, that every word that the Father ever spoke rings true forever, um, you're, I don't know. I, I've met one person that's changed their mind since they started down that path. I've met a lot of people who can't see things from my side but think that I'm somehow maybe bad for the Christian community. Like, I guess they think I'm a wolf in sheep's clothing or I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what they think. Dangerous maybe for people to believe the way I believe. I think that they're afraid that somehow my belief could possibly negate what Christ did for us. Um, I don't know how that would work, but I think that's what I used to think. So that's why I'm going with that. But anyway, it's assisting silent seekers because it's for people who are afraid to ask these questions out loud, afraid to ask their pastor, afraid to ask their friends, their family members, or maybe they have asked and they have not gotten satisfactory answers. Okay, so this morning, um, I that was just my introduction. I'm just going to only take a couple of minutes, I hope, with the, what I read. I was in Psalm 119 this morning. And um, I'm just going to read to you from verses 13 through 18. And then I'm going to add one more verse at the end. Okay. So this is the King James Version. It says, With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So I read these verses this morning and the first verse that caught my attention was the one that I read first, uh, verse 13. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. And I feel like a broken record <laughs> on Facebook and on my blog sometimes that I'm trying to help people see that everything God ever spoke is good, true, forever, good, forever, righteous. Um, so this verse really rang true to me that I have spoken these things with my own lips. Um, I rejoice in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. My life is enriched by the Torah. Uh, people think that the Torah, some people think that the Torah is the Talmud. They get the two confused. So the Torah is just the first five books of the Bible. Every Christian believes that the Torah is true. They just don't call it the Torah. They call it the Pentateuch or Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay. The Talmud is the part that the Pharisees wrote. Um, all of the extra little rules that Jesus had a problem with when he was on the earth. Okay, that is the Talmud. Uh, for the longest time, they called it the oral Torah. Uh, so, in other words, they were saying, this is what God told us, and now we're telling you. God didn't tell the people directly, but they said he's speaking to you through us. Okay, now that's highly suspect if you ask me. Um... The next verse says, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. All I know is that when we far started looking into Torah, we were, we couldn't sleep. I, I was laying awake at night just thinking about all of these things and how strange it was that everything finally added up. Um, I had always found what I thought were contradictions between the Old Testament and the New Testament, or maybe not contradictions because I believe that the Bible was true, but I just didn't see how the God of the New Testament and the God of the Old Testament was the same personality. Let's put it that way. Um, I had always thought that uh, the father of the Old Testament was vindictive and um, too hard on us 
and wanted too much from us de demanding. I didn't realize that he's only ever loved us. Strangely enough, I mean, I've served the same God my entire life, but for some reason I missed that. I thought that he had to send Jesus Christ in order to suddenly be this loving, kind, gracious, forgiving God. Um, that is how he accomplished his purpose. That is how he accomplished putting justice and mercy um, together. But that was always his intention. Um, so it's not like Jesus came and altered what the Father already had planned. He didn't change anything. He just put all of the right things in motion. Okay. Um, the next verse says, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Okay, so we are delighted by God's instructions. We are finding out that they were good for us the entire time. I remember when our son was born, my husband and I were saying, well, for some reason... God asked the Israelites to circumcise their sons on the eighth day of life. And we were saying, I don't think he made it up for just some reason so that he would have power over the people. We thought that he must have had a really good reason, like actually beneficial to the people. So that's what we decided to do. And I know the people at the hospital thought we were crazy because we weren't Jewish. But we did that. And then we found out way later... And I guess the scientific community has known for a while, but I'm pretty sure they've known for fewer than 100 years. We found out way later that uh, blood clotting peaks on the eighth day of life. So if you're going to have a procedure like that done, you might as well do it on the eighth day of life and avoid a higher risk of infection. So it turns out he knew what he was talking about, right? Way before they had microscopes to find these kinds of things out. Um, so the next verse says, Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. What's the point of life? To keep, to keep his word. The point is that he gives us good instructions, things that are good for us, and we live abundantly when we follow those things. Um, the point of existence is life. It is living. Um, anytime you are not following the instructions, you are sinning. The wages of sin is death. These are the things that lead to death. Um, I know people will think that that's a very strong language, um, but 1 John 3, 4 says, He that sinneth transgresseth also the law. Sin is transgression of the law. So you can look that up. It's in the New Testament. So that might make a difference to you. I'm not sure. The last verse that I read earlier says, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Our family feels like Saul, who was called Paul. The scales fell from his eyes, and suddenly he saw how Jesus Christ aligned with everything he thought he knew about the Torah. Only we were on the flip side. We, we were Christians, right? We already knew who Jesus Christ is. Um, but when we discovered and <laughs> discovered Torah, it felt to us like the scales fell from our eyes. And suddenly we saw how the Torah aligned with everything that we knew about Jesus Christ. Um, it's crazy, the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament that we never realized were there. All of the answers that you can find that you always wonder what the Bible was talking about, and now suddenly everything makes sense. Um, anyway, I want to read one more verse to you because people will say um, that this was only for the Israelites, or this was this was only until Jesus Christ came. Um, I'll have to address the Israelite thing later because I said this is going to be short. But Psalm one nineteen verse forty four says, "So shall I keep thy law continually, forever and ever." Okay, so this is. Pretty sure this is David talking. Let me look real quick. Oh, my Bible doesn't say. Okay. Um, anyway, well, it doesn't matter who it was. It's a scripture, right? We believe that it's true. We believe that it was true when it was written. Um, we say that the word of God shall stand forever. The Bible says that about itself. We say that we believe every single word. And if it's true that the writer of this specific psalm will keep the law forever and ever, continually, then I don't understand how 
people can say that Jesus came to do away with it. I do believe he did away with the, well, not that he did away with the curse of the law. I believe that he met the requirements. I think that he met the requirements and that the curse of the law, which is death, fell directly on his head. And if you don't fall under the protection of Jesus Christ, that curse will fall on your head. So it's not like Jesus did away with the curse because it is still very much in effect. He just took it upon himself to cover us, we who believe. Um, so I think the law is still intact. If it was not, then there would be no penalty for sin. Okay? The law tells us what sin is, and it also tells us what the penalty is. And I believe that those things are still very much part of our lives. We just don't have to fear the penalty because it's been taken care of already. So anyway, that's a little bit about me, a little bit about why I recorded this video this morning. And just something I came across as I was reading this morning. So, see you guys next time.